Hi, I'm meteorologist Evan Bentley, and I'm going to take the next couple of slides here to discuss the life cycle of a thunderstorm. So first of all, the ingredients for thunderstorms. Uh, you need certain ingredients there to produce a thunderstorm. You need moisture, instability, a source of lift or a trigger, and then also wind shear to help make the storm severe. The life cycle of a thunderstorm has three stages. First, there's the developing stage, the mature cumulus stage, and then the dissipating stage. The total life cycle of this storm cell is about 30 minutes or so, uh, but that can continue to regenerate throughout the entire process, which we'll talk about later. The developing stage of a storm cell lasts about 10 minutes, and it's the towering cumulus stage. This is where you might see clouds outside that would look like big cotton balls or big pieces of popcorn as they're starting to rise. I mean, that's the beginning stages of a storm starting to develop. This is what one of those clouds might look like when you are looking outside of your window or when you are storm spotting. The next stage of storm development is the mature stage. In this stage, rain begins to fall and that creates a downdraft. You can see the warm, moist air rises in this portion of the storm, and then the cool air sinks in this portion of the storm, and actually that causes a gust front here on the outward portion of it. That's why sometimes that'll expand even outside of the rain, where you might get windy conditions out ahead of a storm. That'd be along the gust front here. You can also see that the freezing level here, these storms usually get well above the freezing level, and that's what generates some hail. Whether or not that makes it to the ground is dependent on how large the hail is and how long it takes it to melt on its journey down to the surface. This is what a storm may look like during its mature stage. You can see these really crisp edges along the edges of the storm. That's indicative of a really strong, strong updraft. In this case, you can see it's even stronger right here. Um, it looks like cauliflower. Uh, that's a great example for, to, of a really strong updraft and something to be looking for if you're looking for a strong storm. The last stage is the dissipating stage. During this stage, the downdraft dominates the updraft and actually cuts it off. So there's no more warm moist air that's actually feeding the updraft. Here you can see there's no red arrows pointing upwards. Everything has been cut off and now it's all uh, the coal air that is sinking within the storm. This is what that might look like. You can see the wispy edges along the edge of the clouds because it doesn't, no longer has those strong updrafts that are feeding it. And the storm will quickly dissipate shortly after this time. So, we spoke earlier about wind shear. What type of impact does that have? Well, that actually will help a storm to last longer than those 30 minutes in cutting off its own inflow, and that's by tilting the updraft. When the updraft is tilted, it no longer gets cut off by the downdraft. The downdraft comes in here and actually helps to feed the updraft to continue to create new cells. These new cells will develop here on what you might hear called the flanking line, um, and so those storms will form and move in to the larger updraft and indicative of a really strong storm. When you see this large anvil here at the top and you actually see an overshooting top with kind of that cauliflower look to it, that's signs of a really strong updraft because it's actually penetrated through the tropopause at that point, which is what has caused the overshooting top. Here along the left you can see that these are the winds and this is what we refer to when we talk about wind shear. We've got really strong winds here aloft and then we have weaker winds throughout the atmosphere as we get closer to the surface and actually winds in the opposite direction at the surface. That's what helps to tilt these updrafts in such a way that makes them last longer than the typical storm cell.